I love football, I love betting on football, and I love it when that is easy, and that is at its easiest on Stakemate. And the beauty of Stakemate is they are now our partners on the kickoff, and they are willing to give you a free £5 bet with no deposit. All you've got to do is click the link in the description below, download the app, sign up, and use our promo code TKO5. Each week, I'm going to be putting on an ACA with Stakemate. You can have a go at yourself. As I said, it's really easy. I've gone this week for Chelsea to be Everton. Chelsea often inconsistent, so last result wasn't good maybe they'll win this one it's Everton they're struggling right now Newcastle at home the Spurs I'm picking Newcastle we've got a decent record lately at home the Spurs Bournemouth against Man United I'm going for Bournemouth just because Man United they're terrible aren't they I mean I am a bit biased but you know uh, and Wolves away win against Forest who are also struggling right now I'm going to put a tenner on that and the return could be as much as 314 quid if it comes off now what I love most about this app is they've got a feature called squads where you and your mates can literally create a group within the app you can message each other on the app send each other bets if you like one of your mates bets you can jump on it as well it's so easy to use rather than having to screenshot it send the bet through your whatsapp or whatever it just simplifies everything and means that as mates you can bet together so big love to steak mate for sponsoring the kickoff and if you love our content you've got to support steak mate who support us remember the links in the description below use tko5 to get your free five pound bet and you can set up your own group with your mates and share your bets today remember steak mate is a betting app you've got to be in the uk you've got to be 18 or older and always gamble responsibly but for now enjoy the video title race update lads Liverpool have slipped from top spot we we thought they might win it yeah. um, see, I'm obviously very happy if I play KJ don't blame me um, they must be so frustrated lads because they had like Man United by the throat for an entire half of football uh, was it 14 15 shots to none yeah. um, they, they were so wasteful it was the most wasteful I think I've ever seen Liverpool in that game uh, what do we make of that performance from them and where they are right now they, they look tired to me Liverpool and I think there's a bit of context that people haven't been speaking about this season in terms of Liverpool. Like, there's been so much of this them running on vibes and it's Klopp's last season, they're going to do it for Klopp. But like, I, I think we have to give Liverpool a bit of credit. Like, how many games have they played with such young players, like academy players, playing a lot of minutes? Do you know what I mean? Be, be it Conor Bradley, who comes in defence. And also, like, I was watching them yesterday and I was, it was the midfield that I was looking at. I was like, this is this was supposed to be a transition season for your midfield. I don't think they thought they were going to compete for a league title with that midfield. I'm, I'm looking at Endo's been a good player for them. And, I, and, and bear in mind our expectations when Endo came he in. He surprised me. From yeah. Germany, 30 years old. We had the conversation the other day about the best midfielders in the league. I saw some comments saying that we should be talking about Endo. I'm sorry, he's not there. For me, he's you know not who there surprised me in a bad way. Slobberzai. Mate, Slobberzai, I don't get it. Because every time, I, by the way, he's created five big chances all season as an attacking midfielder. Now, he, he runs his socks off, Slobberzai. Every time he comes off the pitch, he's drenched in sweat. But every time Harvey Elliott comes on the pitch, I'm like, this guy should be starting games yeah, for you. Yeah, absolutely. This, this guy's a difference maker. He's lucky not to be on that plane to, to Germany in the summer. Seriously, he, he, he's that he's good, Harvey Elliott. When he's on the pitch, he actually does. And I wasn't sure at first, like a couple of seasons ago. Now I'm like, mate, this, how is it not starting every game? This is and it. And I, he, he, he's sloppy at times. He gives yeah. the ball away so he, carelessly. If you would have said to me after a couple of games that his numbers for goals and assists would be what they are, I'd have laughed at you. Because yeah. I, I looked at Spozla and I thought, oh my God, this boy is going to be the trophy. He's going to be brilliant, isn't he? But it just hasn't... Re I still have hope for him. Next season, I think it'll, this, he'll this push on it. again. Yeah. Yeah. But at, at the moment, he's not doing what I thought he'd be doing. I just look at Liverpool at the minute and I think that game there is such a missed opportunity because surely they're looking at the way Man United fell apart in the in the latter stages against Chelsea. They're looking at how they fared against Chelsea this season. And I know, you know, stars make fights, but we, we we were talking in the group chat before the game. I was so confident that Liverpool win that game. Oh, yeah. Today. So confident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think their front three has been exposed a little bit in that game of being good, very good, but not like where they won the league. They, I, it's like Mo Salah, it was one of the worst games I've ever seen him weird. have. And it's weird to say that because he was tired, on the ball, tired. he was impacting the game, he wasn't He wasn't mm -hmm. terrible, but by his insanely high standards, they when, when he's missing so poorly, time after time, um, and Luis Diaz constantly misses mm -hmm. chances, if I'm being honest with you. Every fucking that, game that, I watch this but guy. But they're, they're a volume team now, aren't they? The yeah, whole point but, of that but, front but line. But that's, that's an excuse. But then, that, for me, yeah. you don't always get volume. Like, if for whatever reason, like, if you look at Manchester United, for all criticism I give them, 
them. Fuck me, they take what little chances they get. It, for a team that's challenging for the title, yeah. you can't be that wasteful. Yeah. And Nunes f- is one of the worst at it in the whole fucking league. Oh. And I, I re- the, the, I understand the tactics behind it. Of mm. Constantly create chances and something will happen. But fuck me, that their finishing was piss poor. Oh, the I, I, I believe they missed Jota. I think that was a player that was more clinical than the rest of them. Agreed. And then he, his, his, him not being in the team has changed things. And even Salah, the return of Salah after Afcon and the injury, I don't know if he's really returned to form because we know there was a time when Salah could do whatever he wanted on the pitch. And right now, you, you expect him to be the different make difference maker, but he's probably kind of holding them back at yeah. times. So Is that, that what you said about a, a team needing someone that will take the team on their back, right? Mm. And you look at Liverpool this season, the fact that they're bedding in the midfield, the fact that they've got youth team players starting for them now, more or less week in, week out. They've had an injury crisis of their own. And all of that can be countered by going... But if Salah steps up, takes him on his back, I still believe that if him doing that will win them the league. Let's be fair, by the way. They're level on points top of the table. Yeah. Like, like, this isn't, they haven't thrown progress. a league away. They're level on points with Arsenal top of the table. It's only goal difference. But do, do you not think there's top. a reason for. Uh, look, I don't want to talk about the other teams just yet, but like, I feel like. If, if we're looking at the history of Man City, the history of Liverpool, we're seeing both of those sides on what they used to be in fact and I think yeah. that, that's why it's so wide this open is the time. It is when you watch a game like that you're like mm. this is why it's I, wide I, open I've got to be honest though bro, I, I'm not looking at the attack like when, when you're going to Old Trafford right mm-hmm. in a title race and for me this is this was their toughest fixture left it was I know, I know we talk about Man United but the, this game's always a big game Yeah, it, it's, I don't look at them scoring two goals and think you should have scored more goals and I hear what you're saying about the, the attackers missing chances I hear what you're saying about Sobers I, I think Sobers like it's going to take him time. He's, he's a 10 or an inverted winger. He's not an 8, so he's learning that position still. I look at the defence. I look at one decision by Jurgen Klopp. He started Canate against Sheffield United and he didn't play yesterday. And I'm like, that was mad. this was your toughest game left in a title running. Why didn't you play him against United? That, that, the... If I'm a if I'm a Liverpool was fan, was he injured though, or was he like? I well, he, he, this is a problem. We're at a point in the season where everyone's kind of injured. Everyone's yeah. carrying something. Everyone's playing through something. But if I'm a Liverpool fan, I'm not pissed off that we didn't score more goals. I'm pissed off that they conceded to. That's what annoys me about that game yesterday. Look at looking at Liverpool as a whole. I, I I agree with you, Joe, about a player who put them on his back. I think you can kind of say McAllis has done that a bit. I think if they win the league, you look back and say McAllis has probably been signing in the summer. In the same way that if Arsonal win the league, yeah, I think you have right. to say Declan Rice has been. Well, not I have it. Is it lack like of? Yeah, we'll get we'll get to I, I we'll get to, 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 we'll get to the clock. other teams. I just want to say for Liverpool, when I look at their team, the main thing they're missing for me, Arsenal have got Rice, City have got Rodri. I look at Liverpool's midfield. I'm like, what could McAllister do if he had a player like that next to him? What like someone who could properly shut the back door? The way that they play football, someone else because I think they've relied so much on Allison. And by the way, the second keeper, I forget his name off the top of my head. Hello, hello. He's been absolutely outstanding since he's come in. I think Van Dijk has had the season of his life with either kids next to him or Canate, who's been in and out of teams of injuries. And the way they play football puts so much stress on Van Dijk. If you had one, like, and, and Endo, as I say, has been so much better than we thought he'd be. But if they had a player like Rice or Rodri in that midfield, and we know that they wanted Caicedo last summer. They're winning this league. You know, with you know, with where we looked at Liverpool as potentially being at the start of the season, right? If Liverpool are fourth in the table right now, at the start of the season, I'm saying, if you had a said, right, at the 31 game mark, Liverpool are fourth, you'd have gone, yeah, season. yeah, yeah, decent enough about, right? Because we didn't really think that, right, they're going to have a sustained push show. So, they even off behind the, Newcastle last season, right? exactly. I said, it's it's finished a, behind Newcastle. Even off the mental. back of all of uh, you know the fallout from yesterday, I still think when you're looking at it and you're going right, okay, they're level on points right now. They'd bite your hand off at the start of the season to be there going into this stage, and I do think that those moments, like it's like you know when they got the free kick late on against Man United mm. yesterday. I had a look. I saw Virgil Van Dijk there, and I thought, there you go. He's about to score ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they keep pulling out these moments. So it is the final hurdle now. But They've just got to it keep was... mustering up this magic to stay there or thereabouts. And I think that spirit, that spirit will be enough to keep them there or thereabouts, whether they do it or not. Do you know what I find interesting about this title race though? Because you see yesterday, they weren't just playing Man United. They were thinking about the other fixtures that happened. Uh, like, they have I thinking to. about They've got Arsenal. so many injuries. So now the, the pressure, they was literally thinking about, well, everyone else done their job. Man City, 
City's done their job. Arsenal's done their job yesterday. We must win this game because let's let's have it right. They should have beat us in the FA Cup. They 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 have this thing. I don't know if it's an arrogance because it's us, but they like will score at some point. But if goals weren't coming. Do you not think that there's this thing about the big six slash top six? Like if we do look into Liverpool's record against the top sides, it could be better this season. If there is a mm. thing that you could point, absolutely. Think. If you're going to win the league, you have to you have to win these types of games and the, the the mistake that Liverpool made yesterday was they was incredibly sloppy we shouldn't have been in that game even in the first half let's have it right they should have scored what two three goals and they didn't and it, what Man United fans was watching that game like well oh, hang on it's like it's only 1-0 when we criticise Ten Hag for what the lack of structure I think Klopp gives a lot of structure mm. but he also his method of winning does leave the back door open and unfortunately okay. I do think the mental strength of them players was put to the test and I, I'm, I'm now worrying that this could have fucked it for them this one game I feel about if again fixtures counting if the fixtures are nice then they should be able to because I, I don't even see them losing that Everton game I'm, even no matter what no matter what situation Everton find themselves in nothing I don't see that do you know what else psychologically right, we spoke so we won't go too far into detail but we spoke about whether it was a good thing or not for Jurgen Klopp to come out and say he was leaving when he did or to just wait to the end of the season and do it and obviously n- no one will tell me that that wasn't a calculated decision no one will tell me that Klopp didn't think that maybe that would get more out of his players right but for the good it does there's also bad that it does right because in the week just gone by we've pretty much found out now that Xavi Alonso won't be leaving by Leverkusen <laughs> right <laughs> So all the Liverpool fans, all the Liverpool fans are buzzing there thinking, yeah, Xavi Alonso, yeah. ex-player, he's coming back. Not only that, he smashed it over in Germany, yeah. broke the Bayern Munich stronghold. But then this week they've had that of, oh no, he's not coming. And now and now there's the fear of a bit of uncertainty of what okay. lies ahead. And all, all the more pressure now of, fuck me, you better win this one because you might you might have Deserby coming in, for example, and I'm not slating him, but there's no guarantee there that you're going to be competing next season. So I think that even the announcement of when Jurgen Klopp's leaving, as things play out, can be a little bit detrimental as well when you've had weeks like the one just gone by. Absolutely. You've been looking at the fixtures, lads. Is there any ones that you're earmarking where you think that might be where they... For Liverpool, the only one that I'm looking at now is Spurs at home and Villa away. They're within the last three games. Yeah. Um, they're the only ones that I'm sort of like... I could With see the way Villa are playing, I fancy their chances being... Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But this is the thing like... Uh, Villa's this, chances this, or Liverpool. No, I fancy Liverpool. I, fancy I, I think there. Villa are collapsing. I think Spurs is the one. Should we talk about Arsenal a bit? Because yeah, they, please. <laughs> they came through with flying colours uh, against Brighton. Brighton and Leeton. With, and Leeton. With a, a, an away game against Brighton and you don't know you're going to automatically win that mm-hmm. it did seem quite comfortable though yeah I mean well, let's remember they, they haven't lost a game since the start of the season at home Brighton mm-hmm. they, they've got a really good Ball record team. at home yeah, yeah and, and look mate we, it's hard because as an Arsenal fan I'm not used to this I'm not, I'm not used to this at all we, I'm looking at these fixtures going oh yeah anyway, we could draw points there oh Luton at home that's the kind of game we don't take it too seriously we can see the goal and then suddenly we start panicking the Luton game at home that we played last season it gave me flashbacks of the Southampton game last season mm. bottom of the table Southampton rocking up at the Emirates it was a nice warm afternoon had a few beers before the game going yeah this could be easy by the time I sat down in my seat for that Southampton game we were 1-0 down because of an Aaron Ramsdale mistake but what you see now players like Aaron Ramsdale, who I loved, by the way, who I was on this show talking about how he should be starting instead of David Raya. That's why I'm not a manager. Because instead, we've got David Raya, who takes the temperature of a game so well, who knows when to draw players onto him and pass it out, who also knows when to go, bollocks to this, we're going long for 20 minutes because mm-hmm. we're not taking any chances. and I'm not putting my defenders under stress when I don't want to. That, for me is what's changed this season. We, we've got players in that team and it's so much stuff that I have to hold my hands up as a fan and say, I didn't even want this. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, Start of this season, I wouldn't have said to you, do you know what? Let Gabby Jesus play wide a bit. Let him sit on the bench for a little bit and let's start Havertz all the time because mm. he's going to counter press. He's going to win second. Ha- Havertz has really proved yes. a lot of well, people. But, but it's, it's, mate, he's, he's proving they might me. He's at this table right he's now. <laughs> Look at Josh and Havertz. Right. Wow. Hey, and li- no, but see, and just, use the data, though. I'm I mean, if we're going to talk about Havertz, use the data. I mean, Nicholas Jackson's got more goal involvements than Havertz this season. So, what's, what's, he's what's, a uh, so Nicholas Jackson, you lot take it. Havertz is a success. Are you lot serious? Let's do this. Let's do this. 
Are you having a lot? Are you having a lot? Are you having a lot? Use whatever suits are. Are you having a lot? Are you not? Is this what you're doing? Okay, let's talk about habits then. Let's talk about habits for a minute. I love that, by the way. It is. It is not just about fucking Nicholas Jackson scoring some amount of goal. There's a reason we're the best defensive team in the world, and we are the best defensive team in the world. Numbers tell you that. It's not just Gabriel and and Saliba at the back. The world felt. Havertz is so good because of his pressing. Mm. God, he is. Honestly, he is. I, I feel like I watched him for two years and I was trying to figure out: is he a header? Is he a? Is he a striker? Is he a CM? He's a presser. Oh, he's a presser. Yeah, he's Fuck! Pre- I have no idea. Is that good at it, mate? Josh, we're top of the league. We're top of the league. He does offer you know, a nice got... alternative option for Arsenal, which Ooh. I do think that, in retrospect, not realizing at the good. time when mate. he came in, I thought it was a ridiculous signing. But now I'm like. That's no, not the bad side because when you have needed something else to get you that third goal to, to equalise or whatever, mm-hmm. he, he's there somewhere. Guys, it's been a revelation, fam. It's let's, been call him, let's call him what he is. I, I hate Arsenal as much as anyone. I'm looking at that side and saying, oh, Kai Havertz. I thought it was funny when he first came. Yeah, same. It's, I thought this is how oh, hilarious. Now. Look what Arteta's getting now, Kai Havertz. Mm. Come on, guys. Let's not Mate, be. We had seasons like this with Havertz. No, no, but then we it's, literally have already it's been meaning, through it. It's meaning something. He's scoring in, in key moments and big it's, moments. He's he scored in the Champions League final for us. We've seen it. We've yeah, been and he won the Champions League. So yeah, he did. But, it, but that's, that's, it works. It works. Do you, Havertz work. If you know what you're doing, Mate, with I it. think we're sat here. I I'll think we're sat here next having. season. I think you're going to be as infuriated with him. I don't think I will. Do you know why? Because the, the reason he worked for you is because you had Thomas Tuchel who knew how to use him, mm. and then you got rid of Thomas Tuchel and you stopped knowing how to use him. Before no. Thomas Tuchel, you didn't know how to use him. No. No? no, no, I'm not agreeing with that. Thomas Tuchel, I, I'm not saying Thomas Tuchel didn't know how to use him, but the picture you painted there was that Kai Havertz was really good under Tuchel. I'm not saying he was really good, he was effective. Stop. I don't think he's been amazing. He's I, would, I would actually say that I'm somewhere in the middle of both of you, and I think to an extent both of you are right. I think that Kai Havertz is showing himself to have been a shrewd signing in terms of like, you could have gone and signed two, maybe even three players because of the versatility he can show where he can drop into different areas, different positions. So I think for that, he's been good. I would have hoped for 60 million and listen it's rich coming from me a, a, a fan of a club that spends ridiculous sums of money on One players billion. but for <laughs> 60 million <laughs> or, that's the first time I've heard that this season um, but for, for 60 million I think he's doing what you would hope he would do coming in there just just hold that for one moment so at the start of this season yeah we had, we had uh, a few Skip 60 million pound attacking midfielders moving around the league uh, so Bosley comes to Liverpool Havertz has been better than you. Uh, James Madison's gone to Tottenham. No way. He's got four goals. Kai no. Havertz has got nine. No, he's, no. he's been injured. So no. He's he 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 injured every Keep season. Going. That's why no one buys him. Keep okay. going. Okay, tell you the truth. Keep going. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Because you're both about a signal. Okay, going. so if you, can have one or, if you can have one or the other, James Madison or Kai Havertz, you pick Kai Havertz, do you? Of course. Because he's what we need. Mate, what are you going to do with James Madison and, and Erdegaard in the same midfield? Yeah but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but then, yeah, but then, that's doing it based on what Arsenal need. You're just comparing to the two players. I, and I, I don't get me wrong. I'm, I, I think Kai Havertz has had a better season than James Madison. I, I, he scored more goals. He's he'd been more available to Arsenal. And what has he done for Arsenal in terms of taking us from what we were last season to what we are this season? He's made us a more difficult team to beat. Yes, I, I, I think James Madison is a great footballer. I've sat here and said he could be up for Player of the Season. He's not been available enough. Do you know what the problem is? And by the way, can I just quickly say, Mm -hmm. that's another thing that we fixed last summer. What happened to us last season? We got to this stage of the season, Gabby Jesus was unreliable, Mm. where Thomas Partey wasn't in the team, William Saliba wasn't there. What's happened in the summer? We went out, we bought Declan Rice, who doesn't miss games, we bought Kai Habert, who doesn't miss games. Where are we now? We've got available players. At some point, I get the injury thing, but when a player's been repeatedly injured in his career... It's only your fault if you keep investing in that player. And by the way, I've been frustrated about us doing that with Zinchenko, with Jesus. So what did we do in the summer? We did things that made us less reliable on those two injury prone players. Making a, and this is why Newcastle need to sell everyone, basically. Arsenal now, top of the league, with seven games to go. Mm. Now all of a sudden, for the first time this season, Brilliant. the pressure comes on Arsenal. Mm-hmm. And we've seen last season, that didn't work out well. Can it work out well now, though? I'm not going to sit here and say I think we can win the league because let's be honest with ourselves we we have seen these players I don't like the B word I don't like saying bottle but <laughs> what well, so, some would argue yeah, Liverpool have exactly. bottled it against Man United I, I mean yeah, yeah. I, I, I think with Liverpool you have to look at the, t- the players on the pitch and go fair enough man like you, you've, there's a lot of players who are carrying injuries there's, you know, no right, not right this, that's their, been but, rubbish yeah, what are talking know, about but, but, that's, no, that's, I, th- I think all goes I, out the window though I, I, think, I, I think it's harsh and it shows the standard of where we're at right now to call a draw away Old Trafford bottling it regardless. Did you see? Wait, wait. 
Did you see the games that we just played, guys? Come on, don't take the piss. No. We've been laughing at my club for. We played Chelsea, the El Madico. We played that game, <laughs> and then we played Brentford. And you're telling me that um, top of the you can go for it and beat us. It's not like we could stop you. Eight, fifteen shots in the first. What do you call it? It was a bottle it, it, job. It, it yeah. feels like it was the, a the pressure job. of the title race yeah. played a role in the finishing of Liverpool that day. That day. Uh, that, that's your my my view is slightly different. That I think that Klopp is squeezing an awful lot of an orange that don't have much in it. I, I think and, that's and, truth and both. And I think, yeah. yeah, I think there's truth in both. Can, can in I terms ask, of, do you want Liverpool to stay in this title race? I know that sounds really stupid because at some point you needed Liverpool to lose. But if I'm an Arsenal fan, I want Liverpool to carry on piling on the pressure for the time being and just win it in the last couple of weeks because I think your track record shows, and this is what you're maybe alluding to, when the pressure's been in, on you and it's been in your hands, for example, when it was sort of in your hands to get top four that season, the next season, when you had the advantage in the title race over City, that's when the pressure's mounted and it's... Yeah become a little bit too much and you can sometimes look at the age especially the footballing age of Mikel Arteta and say maybe the lack of experience in those high pressure <clears throat> top top level situations is where you fell short there so for me I'm looking at it and I'm going mate it's brilliant us keeping off Man City but let's keep Liverpool keeping the pressure I'm on them s- too I'm going to say different you know what is what they have is leaders though and that's like it hurts to say it but that partnership of Gabriel and Saliba Mm. Raya, um, Rice, even even Ben White, um, we, we, Ben White, we, whatever you want to say. But then, if you look through the spine, through that whole team, mm. they have people that can get it done. That's Again, the, yeah. so now it's like so. I can't see where's the slip up coming. Well, I, okay, the, I okay. believe okay. was Fuck. that they yeah. wouldn't score the goals. Like I, I was wondering, are we gonna? Because it, it's not been like earlier in the season. It hadn't been like this free flowing yeah. ball. I was like, are they yeah. gonna struggle with relying on Enketia and Jesus? And but, but, like, then, can I just can I just quickly say and coming back to the Kai Havertz thing it's since we moved him to number nine that everyone else has started scoring and this is why I kind of disregard the Curtis Jackson argument because I'm like mate I watched us move Kai Havertz to centre forward in January we've come back and and we're going to score a record amount of goals for our club in a Premier League season because of the way we're spreading goals around because of the way Kai Havertz brings other teams into it I agree with what you're saying Joey I, I agree with what you're saying about pressure hitting us in ways it's not done before and while I hear you KG about the leaders we have in our team those leaders haven't done this before and when I say done this I don't just mean being at the top of a Premier League like I hear what you're saying about is it actually better to have a pacemaker in front of us mm. and we almost sit a point behind and just keep gathering pace not being talked about on talks for every morning what actually scares me the most to be perfectly honest with you is being in the Champions Champions League in in the later stages of it and doing a Premier League running at the same time because this season when we've not had Champions League games i.e. straight after Christmas until March we're the best team in Europe Mm. as soon as we have Premier Premier League games following Champions League games in the autumn we look tired and we look like we couldn't do it we played Tottenham straight after a Champions League game we look a completely different team I was thinking that about Man City because they've got Real Madrid this week but what yeah mate what scares me the most is they get through that and then if you're telling me that we've got to do the end of April we've got I think we've got about nine games in April and then you throw in a double header against Manchester City and by the way we'd play one of those games I think the away game against City would be just before we go to Old Trafford like as much as I love Declan Rice, I love Gabriel and Saliba, I love Erdegaard, they've never done that before. Arteta has never well, done that before. If and you, City fucking win this league, man. But they were the winners. They were the winners from this weekend, though, surely. Like you're looking at things now, and if you're Man City, this is my thing. It's a little bit weird compared to other people. Like I don't really want City to win the league. Most people think, well, hold on, what you want? Uh, Arsenal another London club I'd rather them than City probably because I just find it boring but when I was looking at this weekend and how it unfolded I went uh, yeah maybe it <laughs> so was I thought, maybe so. it was going to happen this way all along and City are the winners here do you know and I mean? also just a little few things where I'm like Grealish has had a terrible season mm. right but, but but in that game I'm like okay you're looking De Kevin De Bruyne uh, other than his Newcastle return hasn't looked great rockets it in the top corner Haaland back it's, on the score sheet yeah. you're like F- uh, Foden hat trick in the week Nate Foden just looks unplayable like so it, it is starting to and worry they have me. know how Be- only because again I just don't want City to win the league because it's so fucking boring, boring. watching them is boring the amount of times I'll sit down and watch a City game and when they take the lead I'm like ah, fuck it it's pointless it's just mm. it's the training exercise saying that though 
though for, in their last game they were sensational though no they are they well, like literally well, like I but sometimes it's, it's want to, to say a they're point of boredom for me it's because it's I'm, annoying because, no, but it's not even annoying it's it's not a, it's like watching a fighter take the piss out of another fight you know when like yeah. you see Floyd in the gym and you're like yeah. well, uh, what's this really yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, what's yeah. the point but I think I think that's going to be the question for Arsenal with the rest of this this title race yeah. it's going to be the, the players you've just listed those Man City players who by the way it's not just they're doing sensational things now they've done it for three years right we're like Kevin De Bruyne has been the best player in the Premier League for nearly 10 years yeah. let's be honest with ourselves Easily. Jack Grealish we've seen him do this year in year out whether it's for Villa or even City last season he produces Foden unbelievable right now Haaland best Arsenal's equivalent players have to go game for game with those guys. Saka has to watch Foden put a hat trick in and go, I need to score three goals at some point. Martinelli needs to watch um, <laughs> Jack Grealish uh. and he has to go, I need to perform at that level. Like Kai Havertz needs to watch Haaland and go, what he's doing, I need to do. Erdogan needs to go, I have to show that I'm the next 10 in the world to say, you know what, De Bruyne, old man, move out of the way, I'm the guy now. He's sending but, a mate, good message to all. He's sending little, a good he's he's message, a... but this is where you decide. If, if you're going to be like no, none of you around this table would say those Arsenal players are as good as those City players, would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? Would you say I'd, Martinelli's as good as as Jack Grealish? Probably I, not. I'd would you say God. Kai Havertz is as good as Haaland? Probably not. I'd would you? God. But right now, as I much as we all love Erdegaard, is he at? Is Erdegaard scoring the goal that De Bruyne scored against Palace? Mm-hmm. Probably not. Wait, I, Probably not. I, but but I, what they've got, Brian, they've got seven weeks. Oh, sorry, seven weeks. Roughly seven weeks. They've got seven weeks and seven games to go. Guess what? We are those guys, and this is how you do it. This is how you. They become should play a- this. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie though. In that game against City, the last one when you lot went toe to toe, and it was kind of people called it boring football. I saw t- a team that was saying, but, "I'm on par." But with what, you. what I'm trying to say I is see the difference. What I'm trying to say, KG, yeah. the players at the back of the team, I think we'd all agree are best in the league. I think yeah. we'd all agree, Gabriel and Saliba, yeah. Canate, Van Dijk, yeah, which whichever, all yeah. world class, right? In terms of the fullbacks, Ben White, I th- I, no one likes him. I'm not him. swapping him for anyone. Talk about it the, um, the, when he dropped his his ass yeah. when, when he was slightly nudged into when he's holding his neck. I'm glad part. he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was, I was seriously worried when I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, listen, I've, I've been in boxing a long time. I know a bad injury when I see one. When yeah. Ben White went down there, I thought, oh God. Here we go. Concussion. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, the, the guy, the guy's a snide little weasel and he's, my, he's let, my snide little weasel. Let's just remember, let's just remember, he did that against his former club as well. No like, shame, like, is that? He doesn't give a shit. He yeah. doesn't give a shit. They booed him the whole game. And what does Trossard do? Who was getting booed as well? Comes on the pitch, scores the third goal to finish him. You know what I'm, it made me think though? And I just keep this brief because it's going off subjects a little bit when everyone's saying no Southgate and Holland must have done something they must have done something for Ben White to have left and then I see that where he goes to the ground over the tiniest little thing I think you know what Southgate probably ain't done fuck all this fella's just a drama queen isn't he yeah, it, listen listen he, I, I think he's got a personality <laughs> true though he's like a Josh's face <laughs> I mean, we said it. We said it. I got called Nigel Farage. He's gonna have his, his full Farage moment. You all after me? <laughs> you all after me? You all after me? <laughs> okay, but I, I, I guess what I'm saying is, I think at the back end of the pitch, you're looking at the Arsenal players, and you go, "Fair enough, that defence is absolutely delivering," and they look like they're going to continue to do so. I, I look at Liverpool and City, and I'm like, "Oh God, are they going to lose a the game?" Then I watch Arsenal. I'm like, "Are we going to concede a goal?" Because we've only conceded four mm. in 2024. You and are by the way, right now, and yeah, you? you're prob. I can feel. You know what, what it is, though. What I'm it's saying, good is defenses win yeah. titles, right? Yeah. And when you watch Arsenal, there is not a better drilled side in the league defense. No, a hundred percent, and and that's not just the defenders; it's the whole team. But what I'm saying, is, I think our back half of the pitch are there. I think they're at the level. They're going. Look at us; we're ready to win a title. Yeah. The question's going to be whether the front half of the pitch are ready to do exactly the same thing. Whether Saka's fit. It might not need to be though. If 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 the back half are better than the rest it might the, the difference with us and if you look at Liverpool's fixtures if you look at City's fixtures the difficult one for City was is the Spurs game the annoying thing about the Spurs game it's been moved it's going to be their second to last game of the season and I can Ooh. fucking tell you now if Tottenham Hotspur have got City turn up and by the way that's a fixture Man City hate going away to Tottenham but if there's two games left if we've only got one game left and we're looking good for the league title I don't think Tottenham Hotspur are going to do too much against Manchester City two <laughs> games to go I think, I think they might have to rest a couple what you got is um, top Champions League football yeah. potentially that's, well, what, I, I that's think what they'll keep per- you know what? personally I think they'll be comfy because there's going to be two places fourth and fifth and I think between them and Villa we, I don't, don't, we yeah. don't find that out though until the end yeah. of the season they, they, I, they'll I, have to get don't fourth leave it to chance yeah. that, that, don't leave it to but chance but that'll be second to last game of the season so I think we might know by then because they, by then we'll have had the Champions League semi-finals so all, all I'm saying is 
Arsenal, in terms of our last fixtures, we've got to go away to Old Trafford and away to Spurs. And I think in those games, that's when you need not just your defence, you need everyone. You need, you need goal scorers. I, I think the rest of our games, I look at play... I don't want to sound cocky. I look at Villa at home and I'm like, you know what? If your defence is solid enough, one goal will win you that game. Yeah. I look at Bournemouth at home, I kind of think similar. I look at Everton at home last game of the season. I'm like, you know what? The defence is so good. At home, we're good. One goal will win those games because we shouldn't concede a goal. I look at going away to Spurs and Old Trafford. I'm like, that's when a Bukayo Saka needs to have a Superman game. That's when a Gabriel Martinelli needs mm. to have a Superman game. That's when Kai Havertz needs to turn around to you guys and go, you know what? Forget fucking Nicholas Jackson. I'm the man here and I'm going to absolutely reverse the narrative you've had it from the start of the season and show that I can win Arsenal a title. That's what the attacking players need to do in those big games because when you look at City and Liverpool's fixtures, they haven't got those kind of games. Don't be coming to Old Trafford thinking that's the game you win. We haven't got a good record at Old Trafford. Yeah, I don't. We don't know. like going to the Northwest. I have to say, look, let's be honest. Looking at the fixtures, City are going to win the league. It is that. It is that simple. <laughs> it's really depressing, but they are going to. They got one more difficult game, and that's all it's going to take. It, like if Arsenal drop four points, that it will be over. Even if you draw two of those games. Oh, no, I, I completely agree. Mate, it's, it's like I said to you guys in the WhatsApp, blink and you're third. Mm. It's literally that. I, th- I think if we draw a game, we've got a 50-50 chance. If, if, if we win all our games, we win it. If we draw a game, I think it's 50-50. I think if Liverpool drop points one more time, they're done. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm the same as you. I look at City and I'm like, yeah, they could win every game. Easily, he's, could he's you mad. You win it on the, uh, do we do we not think though who handles the Champions League balance is also a, a, a huge point because yeah. when I'm looking at Liverpool, them having not having the Champions League, all right, they're still in Europe, but it's not to the same level. I think that that gives them some advantage. But then when I look at all their injuries, when I look at how the pressure affected them at Old Trafford, when I look at how wasteful they're being. I'm sceptical as to whether or not they can carry on. Days as well, horrible. Has, where, where, a, has a team ever won the Premier League while being in the Europa? Uh, Chelsea maybe I mean I if, it, if, it, if it was it was us <laughs> but I don't think it's yeah, been done yeah, so then, I mean it's hard then we're looking at Arsenal thinking for you to balance Champions League as you've said and Premier League without the level of strength and depth arguably that Man City have got it does favour Man City can I, can I be honest <sighs> we've got we've got Bayern Munich this week yeah now, we've got so much history of Bayern Munich. I want us to beat Bayern Munich. I think we're in a really good moment to beat Bayern Munich. Harry they're Kane, in a bad moment as well. They're in a bad moment, yeah. exactly that. I don't want those games against Man City. And, and really? I don't want to lose against Bayern, Munich, against Bayern Munich. I don't want us to go out of the Champions League. If we did go out of the Champions League to Bayern Munich, there'd be a tiny part of me going... That, this makes it that Premier League make, so league. much yeah. easier. Yeah. This, I'm not saying I want to go out of the Champions League. There's a part of me if we did, and there was a part of me, I have to be honest, in Porto, where I was like, this would actually make it so much we've easier. We've seen this in Premier League history, though. People who might watch might not understand. Like We've seen teams benefit from going out of the Champions yeah, yeah, yeah. League in their Premier League title race. It gives us a better moment. And also, the flip side, we've seen, for example, Chelsea, where the Premier League was a write-off, you can then focus on the Champions League. So for people not understanding that, that is... Historic. But it what would historic, you choose though? Yeah. What would you rather? I would say the Premier League. I would rather the Premier League. Really? Now the reason for that is Arsenal are in a position where I think we've been built so well by Arteta and Edu and I look at what Liverpool's happening it looks like it's going to be Amarim he's going to have to learn the language learn the league I think we're going to be in and around for a few years however I also think we're on a little bit of an 18 month deadline to put some proper trophies in a cabinet mm-hmm. I do yeah. because this time next year Saliba two years left Saka two years left I think Gabriel Martinelli will have two years with an option there's going to be a few players next year where we're trying to do contracts again what about Big Man players. City though Man City have got ageing players like De Bruyne FFP is finally going to start getting a little little bit closer to them maybe oh. I, I believe that when I see it mate. Um, I, I, yeah, I, 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 just, we, we, I, I don't know man everyone's just, shaking their heads no, so we, we, the only thing I'm going to say when, when Man City have still got Pep Guardiola yeah. and all the noises that Pep has made this season is he's going nowhere yeah. I'm always going to see them you've never won the Champions League right you've won the Premier League and the one thing that other London clubs say is you haven't won the, do you know what I mean so then all of a sudden you've arrived That's on the awesome. world stage in a, in a new way that'd be mental that'd I, uh, be mental uh, it would I, I just look at Liverpool. Does that not elevate Arsenal to another level than what you've been before? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think be a you're club. saying. I don't think you're saying that what I think the truth is here, where 
you're looking at the Premier League and I'm not saying, oh, it's going to be your one chance. But like next year, you've already guaranteed Champions League football, I'm guessing, with your points tally. You know you're going to be in the Champions League. If Arsenal don't make it out of their group, something's gone seriously wrong. And once you're in those knockout stages, anything can happen. What I'm saying is next year, come the round of 16, quarter final, whatever it is with a new format, you're going to be in the knockout stages yes. of the Champions League. I can't guarantee that at that same point when you're in the knockout stages of the Champions League, you're still in a title race next year. Joey, Joey's articulated that really no, well. And I no. just want to say... One thing quickly. That's wrong. I've, I've. That's wrong. That's what he's saying. It's wrong. Man. What are you, what are you, you can guarantee. You can guarantee. No, because right now they have. They're gonna. They potentially have to play Bayern Munich, who they're better than, and then they got a team that they right now. Pep has not had his way against you guys. You guys are so close to getting there. This is the holy grail. You should. I would not want to be knocked out. Do you not, do you not think now? Though, question for the table. Yeah. Although this would change the way people say Arsenal and for Arsenal specifically it's, to a, win the it's, Champions a, it's League. a big moment right for the club history however Absolutely. if we're being honest right now the Premier League is the hardest thing to win in football and can I, I just quickly, can I just quickly add something in the last if we don't win this Premier League in the last three seasons that B word that bottle word we should have we should have got Champions League football. We finished mm-hmm. fifth last season. We led the league for 118 days. We finished second. If this season we come close and don't get it again, people are going to start having serious conversations about Arteta's ability to manage a run in in a league competition. And I agree with Joey that I've seen teams have bad league campaigns and still compete in tournaments. I look at the players that we can put on a pitch, and I'm like, you can beat anyone on your day. And I, I believe we. That's can That's why back Pep Guardiola has only won the Champions League once yeah. in the last god. Yeah, and, and, because and, and, it is a lot down. Yeah. Chance yeah, exactly, those games. and, and I, 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 I've watched Arsenal in 2006 with a fucking defence of Senderos Flamily tour. Like, I've watched us get yeah. to a Champions League final, and were it not for a dodgy penalty, could have won it. So I, I'm, I guess I've just. I need an answer I from you. I think the Champions League is special. Premier League. Premier League. I'm saying Premier League. The Champions League is way more special. Sorry, I'm just. I, well, there's something KG, about KG that big one, trophy. KG, that one day you'll qualify for it again, and you can have these one conversations. One day you'd win it, mate. <laughs> one day you'd win it, mate. Can't do that with me, mate. No. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let's just let's just round this up after this week, lads. Because obviously last week we were thinking, all right, Liverpool really looking good. They're on for it. They look like it, they've <laughs> hit a speed bump. Who are, are we all thinking? Over Man City now. I, I, I think hope it's clear. so. Can I, I think, think it's can, clear. I, can I just say I hope you are? Because because I do agree with what Joey said. I don't want us mm. to become favourites again. So if if everyone's now saying Man City, I'm cool. No, I'm, 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 I'm saying Arsenal still. However, the the door was only ajar for Man City, and now it's wide open. So, but I still stick with Arsenal. I've been saying them a while. I'm supporting Arsenal now because I can't see if City win the treble again. It's it's finished. There's nothing. I'll have nothing left. I'm Ian Bill. Literally, like this is that. <laughs> that's a it, really man. niche reference. But, <laughs> uh, what about you, Josh? I just I just think with the fixtures that they've got, I think that Arsenal have the potential to drop more points than City do. Like I just think City have got the easiest run in that you could ever imagine. Like look at those fixtures. They always do. L- Luton, whatever. Like they're just going to destroy teams. So I do think it's that simple. And then I think it's relatively likely that they do go on and get to the Champions League final. Oh my god! And that's going to be and then play us in the FA Cup final. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> this my this god. has been this is this has been the best Terrible. title race. This has been the best title race in a while, right? Let's let's be honest. So three teams going blow for blow. There's a point in it. This has been unreal. If we do end a season with City just winning a Premier League and a Champions League, yeah. how and are we all gonna feel? And and not only that, if I then say to you yeah. they failed to win home and away against Arsenal, they failed to win home and away against Liverpool, they failed to win home and away against Chelsea. And they still won. And they could win a treble. In the Champions and they could win a treble. They could win. Mad, and it's the team in transition as well. Um, uh, trust me, it, it scares me when I that city side and. Who is the, the team in the, transition? City. Yeah, because they they've lost um what do you call it Gundogan. They've lost Mares. They've lost like they they're gonna strengthen. Mm. This is not even the final form of this lot. So it's it, for me as a Man United fan, it's scary because I think we have to stop them in the final somehow. Yeah, I wouldn't they, worry about it because the gap isn't that big. Ten Hogs. Yeah. The top. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when it to Do you know what I've took from today, by the way? You're proper overlooking Coventry in it. You're yeah, you are. Yeah, no, no, but it's it's an easy we cannot you allow it. We cannot. We, we must. You know what they said about mine? If, if we Coventry must. win that game. I'm not coming. Uh, 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 I'll no. never. You're going to see if Coventry a win missing game, sign. Brian's hiring a fucking open yeah. top yeah. bus and he's driving. <laughs> he's picking you up on the way to Manchester. I'm not coming back. You'll see a missing sign. I'll be gone, bro. I'm out. 
I'm here, fam. Yeah. We book a live show in for that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, 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 sorry, Josh, you're saying City for the title. I do. I, I've been back in Liverpool all season, but I just think now, with, after dropping those points, and I think with the fixtures, I think uh, both you and Liverpool will drop points, and I don't think City will drop where, any. Can I just quickly ask, looking at our, you've got our fixtures in front of you, yeah. where do you think we drop? So I think the Spurs game will potentially be a draw. I think that no. easily, easily, and then I think going to Old Trafford. I think that could easily be a draw. So he, let, he, he, KG's immediately <laughs> nodding his head. <laughs> Do you know and what? then also, I, I think I'm, the Man United game suits their style better. Actually, yeah. I think Arsenal having such a good defence will help them against Man we're United. We're proper pricks. We will turn up like dickheads in that one. Yeah. Some yeah. I've, I've seen them. Yeah. <laughs> and then also, I don't want to be that guy. And I know you're going to laugh at me for saying this, but I think you could draw points against Chelsea. Draw, yeah. Look at you! Look yeah. at you! He's he's looking at it. I, th- I think I think at home. Do you know? I think at home, you you agree with that though, isn't it? You f- you you. I worry about the Chelsea game. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That when we were really? in the title the race, game. those yeah. three Shit. fucking games. Yeah. To have three out of seven games, Spurs, Chelsea, Man United. That's not nice. That is horrendous. That's not nice. You know, you know, I'm Spurs be Champions League football. Yeah. yeah. The, mm. For Arsenal That's to do nice. this, if, see, that's the thing, I'm going to take all the pressure off. If you do this, it'd be a fucking hell of an achievement. It would. That'd yeah. be amazing. Do you, know, do you know the game that scares me, strangely? Wolves away, eight o'clock on a Saturday night. Oh, yeah, that's oh, horrible. Oh. Horrible. That, and, horrible. And the time, I think you play, what is it? You play Wednesday. Yeah. So you play Wednesday night, and then it's literally right. Bayern Munich, right. Bayern Munich away. Allianz Arena Allianz towards well, you mate. could win though that... and that feeling though if you beat them at Allianz you'd be feeling but like bit, nah, mate, the touchdown in Wolves the feeling's gone this is yeah, yeah. It's gone cold yeah. it, does, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where you've been before you go to Wolves yeah. you feel bad when you get a Wolves <laughs> trust me I've been to Wolverhampton before I, I think that... <laughs> no, he's never getting a gig there ever again oh, that that's that's they love it, they love it. <laughs> he's rinsing <laughs> oh it's just a bit of comedy it's a bit of comedy then, uh, he's I, a comedian I've seen, I've, seen, I've seen us have hangovers after European games I, that, that scares me it does scare me Mate, a bit. Newcastle uh, were a nightmare for it um, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm just so glad we're not qualifying this season yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's so, really <laughs> silver line silver line <laughs> <laughs> do you know I'm praying that we don't get uh, that fucking bullshit 7th or 8th conference league fuck off when, you, yeah. when you go, yeah. you're going you're going to stadiums I've got trains going around the outside <laughs> of I've seen fun <laughs> tweeting like oh we've got to do this in order to get in the conference league I'm like David Moyes fuck man David Moyes fuck man. that shit 